हमारो जीवन सदा पापे रत ना ही को पुण्य लेश पर उद्वेग दिया कत दिया जीवे क्लेश This song we'll do as the first song without the beat. In between, we'll have a chorus. We'll go into the meditation. If it's possible to turn off these lights in the back so we can have the DT, just maybe have the lights turn this off. Turn this one off. Yeah, this is okay. That's good. Little dark, Mataji. It's okay. You know, sometimes Kishori Abnurkar, I don't know if you heard the name Kishori Abnurkar Ji. Few concerts she has done facing the other way, not the audience. Because she's, she's, she's to say, I'm going to see you. She was quite interesting, but she had a point. Just touch your ears. You know, our philosophy is called seeing by the ears. Uh, we have the material philosophy, seeing is believing, right? Uh, then they often challenge you. They say, well, where is God? So, but the Vaishnava philosophy is based on see, learn how to see through your ears. Um, it's funny, sometimes they give the analogy of drink from your ears. So apparently the ears can do both, see and drink. <laughs> so ears are given much more importance. My music teacher used to always say, man has one mouth, two ears. Why? I don't know, Guruji, I don't know. Speak less and hear more. <laughs> That's how you do music. Shravanam, everything begins by listening. Shravanam, then Kirtanam. So this song, Amaro Jivan Shada Papirato, Nahi Ko Punnel Lesh. This is a very, uh, quite a confronting song. Uh, they say Bhakti Guna Thakur in his biography, it's mentioned, he was very punctual, he did everything in time because he was <clears throat> not only a very, uh, he used to write a lot, you know, all these different you know, compositions, songs, and then the philosophy, research, and then on top of that he was a judge. So you can imagine his time, he was truly busy. And a big so family. it says that, sorry? And a big family. And a big family as well. Yes, how many children? Ten? Eleven. Eleven oh. children. Okay, so a lot to do. So he used to write in the evening. And I often think when I, as, as a person who's trying to learn music, and we understand that lyrics go with melodies, right? You cannot have lyrics saying something else and the melody saying something else. The, the melody has to match the lyrics. So think about the lyrics here. And then I came up with this melody. Uh, I thought, I meditated that perhaps Bhakti Unod Thakur was sitting uh, in his, if you go to Mayapur, you can still see his place where he would sit and write across the Jalangi River. <clears throat> so maybe he was sitting in the evening writing, contemplating, my dear Krishna. <clears throat> This is one great quality of a Vaishnava. He never thinks he's a Vaishnava. And he's saying, My dear Krishna, my life is full of sinful activities. Uh, so maybe Prabhu will read the translation. My life is always engaged in sinful activities without a trace of pious activities. I'm always inclined to give great anxiety and trouble to other living entities. Continue? Yeah. For my personal sense gratification, I never reject any kind of sinful activity. I am not at all merciful, and I see only to my personal interest. When others are suffering, I become very happy, and I'm always speaking lies. And if someone is suffering, <coughs> that is very pleasant to <coughs> me. I have lots of material desires within my heart and I am always angry and deceitful. I am captivated by subject matters of sense gratification, and I am almost crazy. My ornaments are malice and false pride. 
I am conquered by sleep and laziness, and I'm always averse to pious activities, but I'm very enthusiastic to perform in pious activities. I always cheat others for my prestige, and I'm conquered by greed, and I am always lusty. I am so fallen, I have no association with devotees, and I am always an offender. In my life, there is not a bit of auspicious activity, and my mind is always attracted by something mischievous. Therefore, at the fag end of my life, I have become almost an invalid because of all such sufferings. Now, in my old age, with no alternative, I have by force become very humble and meek. Thus, Bhaktivinoda offers this sad statement of his life's activities at the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord. Oh, 
The devotee that just knows little bit thinks he's the most advanced. But this is the life of my life. I can see my life. Everything that Bhakti Mano Thakur says, it's applicable to me. But it doesn't matter because in the end, just like a beautiful movie, it ends in optimism. My dear Krishna, yes, I have all these faults, but you know, it's okay. I have come to your lotus feet. Who else will really understand these sad tales of my life? It's a waste of time trying to reveal your heart. Nobody really understands. Life continues. No matter how dear you are to a person, if that person were to depart, do you stop eating? No. But the only personality that travels with you within your heart, even though you are changing bodies according to your consciousness, he stays, remains with you, the most faithful, loyal friend. But how unfortunate that we have turned away from him. But it doesn't matter, my dear Lord, I have come to you. No other refuge. Upai, there's no other options left. I've tried everything. Joined core yoga gym. <laughs> Nothing's working out, my dear Krishna. Oh, <laughs> 
Oh. 